actually, um, the slideshow of my daughter, I don't have anything else to say. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been said, but uh, I, I do want to uh, thank my daughter for the wonderful uh, introduction. And of course, to thank the Montgomery County Council for getting this thing off the ground. Trish, in particular, for all the hard work I know. I talked to her and emailed her probably 30 times in the last two weeks. A lot of work and by a lot of people, and it's a great, great idea that's going to get bigger and bigger because there is an awful lot of people that should be or will be in this organization before it's all over. And I'm having a little trouble seeing this. We'd like to congratulate all the other inductees, uh, especially the next one, Mr. Sean Springs. <laughs> because I had the privilege of coaching him, and without him, I probably wouldn't even be standing here. <laughs> but uh, seriously, um, and I'm having trouble reading my handwriting on top of that, to, to be, really, when I heard about this, and, and to be placed in, in this inaugural group, you know, with three professional athletes and two gold medal winners, I mean, it's like surreal to me. I'm not in that zip code. I'm really not. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to be here, and you have to drag me off. But uh, it, it's such an honor. I, it's, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to, to tell you my feelings. Anyway, a lot of, my, a lot of things that I was going to say, uh, actually, if I put my glasses on, I'd probably help read this thing. <laughs> a teacher told me a long time ago, Find something that you love to do, and then somehow find a way to, to get paid for it. So as the story said, in 1961, my brother came home, and you know the, the team was uh, going to be canceled. The season was going to be canceled, eighth grade football, at a little place called Little Flower Catholic High School, where Katie Ledecky went. <laughs> and uh, so I actually, that's one thing I have be famous about it. I went to the same elementary school that Katie Ledecky did. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, the priest said, you can do it until I find somebody else, and that was 57 years ago, and uh, it was, you know, the best thing ever happened to me. However, you know, in 56 years of coaching football, you know, I never made a tackle, and I never caught a pass, and I never scored a touchdown. I had an awful lot of help, and uh, I, I, be remiss by not saying a few things. To be a successful high school coach, you need five very, very important parts. Um, number one, you got to have great players. And uh, of course, one of them sitting over there. Actually, there's a bunch more from Springbrook sitting right in here that, that I just noticed. But uh, you got to have great players. And over the years, we had nine of them that got to the NFL, and, and over 300 of them went and played college football. You got to have great coaches. Great coaches, and uh, I had dozens of those. None of them, not too many of them are here because they're all coaching football Friday night. They're, you know, they all got games. All of them are still coaching. But a uh, couple of them are uh, John Haberman. I worked worked with John for 26 years. You'll <laughs> Gary Gary Robertson, who's sitting back there. We coached together for a long, long time. Third thing is, you know, you need great administrators. You have to have them. And over the years, I've had some, been exposed with some great ones. Uh, my first boss was Morgan Wooten. You probably heard of him. My second boss is Dr. Daryl Shaw, the longtime principal of Whitman High School. Uh, then I worked for Dr. Thomas Marshall at Springbrook for 18 years. And Jack Graham at Good Counsel after that. Uh, Art Ramos, the president of uh, of good counsel who actually hired me there. And I see that our present president, Dr. Bark, is sitting back there. Doctor, thank you for coming. And somebody else, if I miss anybody, I, I really do uh, apologize. Thousands, thousands of, of great parents and supporters of the program, thousands of them. Uh, you obviously couldn't mention too many of them. But, you know, and last and certainly not least, my family, my wife of uh, 44 years, Susan. Thank you. I coached my oldest boy, Brendan, played tackle for me on a, on a state championship team at Sherwood. And the second one, Robbie, played for three years. And I did coach Kelly in lacrosse, as she said. 
Uh, I'm the oldest child of 10, uh, and we, we grew up on Seven Locks and Bradley Boulevard. In 1953, we moved in there, so we've been in Montgomery County for longer than I want to tell you, but uh, <laughs> 72 years, and uh, uh, my mother is still alive. She couldn't come tonight, but uh, she's 94 years old, and uh, she'd have liked to have been here, but she's not. I do have uh, my brother Timmy and my sister Mary Lou. I don't know if anybody else is there. And my niece Lauren is there. They're sitting right there. Thank you for coming. And I heard, uh, I read a book by Bud Grant, the famous football coach of the Minnesota Vikings. And Bud Grant says, he says, you ever get in front of people, he says, you got to remember, you got to stand tall so they can see you. And you got to speak loudly so they can hear you. And you got to speak slowly so they understand you. And you got to speak briefly so they'll like you. <laughs> so, in closing, I had the best job, the best job in the world. I did it and uh, loved every minute of it. I used to look forward to, to getting up and going to work. And it's a privilege and a coach, or an honor rather, to be called coach. It makes me smile every time I hear it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.